So for those of you new to my channel, I try to help you all on how to be more independent from the electric grid using solar and battery storage to accomplish that. Now a critical component of accomplishing that is having energy efficient appliances, especially if you don't have natural gas or propane to run those larger appliances in your house. Now most people who do off-grid solar use propane for their hot water heater, their clothes dryer, their whole house heater. Now I'm choosing to keep my house all electric. Why? Because I did used to have propane appliances, but during COVID it was taking about three months to get a propane delivery out here. So I learned really quick that I did not want to be dependent on anyone else for any power that I needed. Services like that these days are just becoming more and more unreliable. It's, just, it's that simple. Now all of these appliances I'm about to talk to you about, I have in my ebook I wrote about off-grid solar. It's called the guide to grid independence. Now that goes into everything I've learned about off-grid solar appliances, how to make sure you're not using too much of your battery bank at night, equipment to use. I mean, everything I've learned I put in that book. So if you're interested in checking that out, it's less than $10. You can check that out at solar-ebook.com. Now with solar and battery storage, I can be completely independent from the grid. And I'm doing all of this without sacrificing my standard of living. Now there are some people on other channels who do it all on 12 volt appliances, use very little air conditioning, use propane for all their appliances. Um, I'm not doing it that way. I'm trying to increase the amount of solar I'm bringing in and increasing my battery storage so I can live my usual life without having to really worry too much about, about having enough power, except for days when it's really heavy overcast, like rain type of clouds, then you need to be conservative if you want to remain off grid. But you're always going to need some sort of backup anyway. So I do have a generator. I also use I use the grid as backup, actually, because that's the cheapest form of backup power. So when my batteries don't have enough storage, there's not enough solar. I just go back to grid for a little bit. And that happens automatically with the system I use with my inverter. But in the event of a grid down situation, I do have a generator just in case for backup. So how am I able to remain off grid without using propane appliances? It's by using really energy efficient appliances and they are out there and the technology is getting better every day. So let's get into those. Now, traditional electric water heaters can use an upwards of four, th four to 5,000 watts when they are running. That is a lot of power for those traditional two element, two heating element uh, water heaters. Those just aren't gonna work, especially at night on an off-grid solar system. Or if they do, if you wanna use that, you're not going to be able to run much else. That's going to start to max out your inverter very quickly on how much power you can use. Now, I use the Solark 15K. That inverter can do about 12,000 watts at night when it's just working off batteries. Now, as you can see, four or 5,000 watts, that's taking up about 40% of the available use. And that's before anything else, like air conditioner, lights, TVs, clothes dryer, things like that. Well pump, which I do have. So you got to keep that in mind. So what I did is I purchased a Rheem hybrid. It's a heat pump water heater. Now it does have the two electric, electric burner heating elements like a traditional one, but I just choose to not use that and only use the heat pump portion to heat the water because the heat pump portion only uses about 450 watts when it's running. Now it takes a little longer to heat the water up. It also depends on how hot your environment is. So I'm in Texas, so it uses, it basically sucks the heat out of the room that it's in and puts that into the hot water. So if you're in a really cold climate, your water heater's outside in the garage where it's freezing or below freezing, it's not gonna be very efficient if it's in really cold weather. Now you can always use the electric burners, the traditional burners on that water heater during the really cold times of the year. And then spring and summer, wherever you live, you can switch it to heat pump and still save a lot of energy. But this water heater's really best for people who live in Southern areas like California, Arizona, Nevada, Texas, Georgia, anywhere in the South or maybe the Midwest would probably be okay too. Or if you have this thing in a heated garage, um, then you can put it in your garage. Or like me, I actually have it in a utility room inside my house that's heated and air conditioning. So you can do it that way. It doesn't matter what climate you live in. It's still going to be room temperature in that room. So it'll, it'll work just fine. But that is one thing to consider about this type of water heater. So, and I'll leave a, a link in the description to these. And also you can visit my website, unpluggedtexan.com and there'll be a little tab up there that says uh, recommended equipment. Click on that and I'll have all these appliances with links to where you can purchase them there. So like I mentioned, in heat pump mode, my water heater uses only 400, eh, 400, 450 watts while it's running. 
compare that to 4,000 watts from the traditional all electric. And you can see how important it is to use up very little space on your inverter. That water heater, I barely notice it's even running on my system. So that's been a huge benefit for me to have all the hot water I want and not have to sacrifice that part of my lifestyle to try to remain off grid. And the hybrid water heater, while it's a little more expensive, probably in the 15 to $1,600 range for the 40 gallon unit that I have, you still do get a federal tax credit for that because it is an energy efficient item. So that helps with your purchase if you have enough income to basically use that to get a tax credit. All right, let's move on to the next appliance I use. So the clothes dryer. So a traditional electric clothes dryer that's 240 volts is gonna use also around 5,000 watts when it's running. And a typical dryer runs about an hour. So, and you can see if you use a traditional water heater that's almost 5,000 watts with a traditional clothes dryer that's about 5,000 watts, that's 10,000 watts being used at one time. And at night, that will drain your battery bank very quick. Or as you can see with like a Solark 15K, which I have, or the EG4 18K PV, which I also have, that I'm swapping out here recently, or about to swap out to test that, those max out at about 12,000 watts. So you can see you've got really no room after that. That's 10,000 watts being used just from two appliances out of the 12,000. So again, you can see how critical it is to get energy efficient appliances. So what I got was the new GE all-in-one combo. It's a washer dryer combo, heat pump washer and dryer. So it's all-in-one, which means I save space. So my utility room, it only uses half the space is what I used to have with my traditional washer and traditional electric dryer. But here's the fun part. When it's running, now even the, the washer, when, it's, when the washer's running, I mean, it uses like hardly anything, like 200, 250 watts. But when it's in dryer mode, it runs on about 500 watts. Again, it's about 5,000 for a traditional electric to 500 for my heat pump. Now, a lot of these heat pump washer or dryers in the past have been awful. They've been very small. They've taken three, four hours to dry a load. That's not counting washing it. Um, this one is different. It is better. It's full size. It can fit a full size like comforter in it. Um, my wife and I have loved it since we purchased it. You throw your clothes in there, it'll wash it and then dry it all in one shot. And to do that, it takes about two to three hours round trip. That's washing and drying. And we've had no issues. Now I have read on Amazon. Some people say that it's not drying enough. I've never had that issue. I don't know if there's, there's some issue with their dryer sensor in there. That's what I probably lean towards because there is a sensor that will actually tell it how long it needs to dry and it notices when the clothes are dry. So that's probably the issue they have there. This is new technology. It's not going to be perfect, but for me, it's worked great and I can do laundry at night and not worry about it. It does not use that much electricity. So that's been a big hit for me. I'll leave a link to where you can buy that. And also you can see it on my website um, in the recommended equipment tab. Next is air conditioning. Now I do still have my big traditional four ton uh, AC unit, the big giant condenser that everybody has uh, when they buy a house. I still do have that hooked up. I rarely use it, but when I do use it, it's when there's, I've got full sun, plenty of sun to cover basically running that thing along with all my other um, appliances. Um, but for the most part, what I use is in my living room, I installed a 24,000 BTU Mr. Cool. It's a DIY mini split basically. DIY because the refrigerant lines are already pre-charged. So if you're good with a hammer and a drill, you can really install this yourself. It's not that difficult. So I bought that to put in my living room and I've got like an open concept house. So the living room, the kitchen, the dining room, and a hallway are all kind of like a shared area. Now this 24 K BTU mini split that I use is big enough to cool or heat that entire space. And I love mini splits. They're very energy efficient. And when that Mr. Cool 24,000 BTU unit is running, it runs on average probably around 1200 pulls about 1200 watts is what i'm seeing it pull um and that's way better than running my whole house air conditioner which is 3500 when it's running in tandem with my forced air unit so as you can see i'm saving 2000 a little more than 2000 watts running watts using that mini split now the bedrooms i can leave the bedroom doors open and that mini split will keep the rooms within about five six degrees of the living room with that 24k BTU unit, but I also have another mini split in my master bedroom. I have a little single 9000 BTU EG4 mini split, and it's it is 29.5 SEER2 rating, so it is incredibly efficient. 
At night, we shut off the mini split in the living room and we just run our Mr. Cool in our master bedroom and we keep our room at about 66 degrees and that's in the summertime, so we like it cool. This thing on average, it's only running like 250 watts. Over a 10 hour period, that's like 2.5 kilowatt hours it's taking from your batteries. So it's a game changer. I highly, highly recommend it. And I have a couple videos reviewing that exact unit on my channel. So scroll through my channel, you'll find those videos as well. But I'll also have a link in the description of this video and on my website at unpluggedtexan.com and that recommended equipment list. All right, moving on. I do still have a propane, a small propane tank, 100 gallon tank, because my oven or my stovetop, the range is still propane. Now I haven't found an electric version that is energy efficient. So could my system handle an electric stovetop um, and oven? Yeah, it could. It could. It would use a lot of power if we're using it at night, but my system's big enough to handle it. So I still use propane for the oven, which my 100 gallon tank lasts me like two years. So it's almost nothing in propane every month. But for the stovetop burners, we actually bought these dual burner induction cooktops. And you can get it on Amazon. I'll, again, I'll link to it or have it on my website. Um, but they use magnetism to cook. And you can plug them right in to a 120 volt outlet that's right there on your counter. And you can set it anywhere on your counter. Um, I set it right on top of my propane burners on my stove. So it doesn't take up any extra counter space. Um, and actually, I owned I owned two of those side by side on top of my oven or on the stove top. So I've got four burners right there that I can cook with electric. So, and those are very energy efficient as well. They're as efficient heating up pans as you're gonna find. Now for cooking small items, we do use just a standard little toaster oven, uh, but those aren't big enough to cook full size cakes, things like that. But whenever we can use that oven, we do. And that's obviously electric and you can pick out any one. They're all gonna use right around 15 to 1700 watts when they're running. Um, I haven't found anything really energy efficient in those, but, uh, that's really it. That's a rundown of the appliances I use that I found that make a big difference with helping to keep me off grid and being able to use all those appliances still at night when I'm on batteries only. Now, for those of you interested who haven't really watched this channel, who are interested in seeing what my solar system looks like, I do have a PDF that I made, uh, an entire wiring schematic design, all the equipment, the links, links to all the equipment I used, every part I use for the install. You can download that at solarpdfdownload.com. And that should give you a really good start on what you need to do basically what I'm doing. All right, that's it for now. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more content like this. And we'll see you in the next video.